Everybody, it's Tyler here at the 2022 Indiana Robox Invitational Checking with team number 4028 Beak Squad Auto Ohio Championship finalists this year, uh, by the way, too. So looking fantastic. Can't wait to talk more about the scene coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Of course, we're going to follow that full cargo journey going through the robot. Check out their climber uh, as well, too. Just so much cool stuff happening with this robot. Help me speak more about this, by the way. I have Carson, Luke, and Bianca. And Big Squad here, a team that, if you look at just very well packaged as they go through, we'll talk about some climber automation uh, with their robot as well, and just really what's gone into a complete machine coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. Let's start out on your intake uh, here. I'd love to hear about just what's gone into it. What made you choose this path? Uh, any iterations throughout the season you might have uh, had as well? Yeah, uh, we wanted our intake to be very flexible and durable. It's made out of Lexan, so it can take hits. If our driver happens to drive into a wall or anything, it can retract. We like to go around the field fast, so it's good to have a nice durable infeed. It's pneumatically actuated, so we can bring it up and down whenever we please. It, sh it goes right into the uh, singulator system, which uses these mechanum wheels to bring it in. Bring it up and in to the inside, where our conveyor can hold two balls. Additionally, we have a color sensor system inside the conveyor that can sense what balls of each color we have and it knows what what side we're on. So, Carson, can you talk about our automatic spit system? So, as, as Luke said, our color sensor senses both spots that we have for balls and it, it tells us whether there's a red ball or a blue ball in there. So, if if one of our balls is incorrect, or if both of them are incorrect, it can spit them out either the shooter or the infeed. And also, if we have three balls, we can use that same spitting sequence to get the third ball out, because it'll be stuck right here in the infeed. So because we are red, this blue ball will be spat out from the top. So three, two, one. And if you can put that back in, It'll now spit it from the front. Is that an automated feature, or does the uh, operator have to press a button in order to do that? Uh, the operator presses one button, and then it gets, it takes the color of the balls and decides what it needs to do from there. Sure, makes sense. Uh, um, I also noticed you do have a camera uh, firing down this way. Are you using that for any sensing purposes, or is that just like a feedback on the driver's station? So a popular strategy we've been seeing recently is hiding balls right behind the hub. So the point, the point of this camera is to, is we have a, we have a feed on our dashboard. Sure. And we use that to look right in front of the robot. And we can, we can then see balls that are, for example, behind the hub, maybe right in front of our driver's station, behind the hangar, anywhere that it might be tough to see from our driver's station. Something else I want to ask uh, as you went through uh, from a mechanical side here, yep. when you looked at the uh, indexing uh, that you've done here, uh, how did you try to mitigate like any sort of jamming as these uh, balls come in? Did the Omni wheels just take care of that for you or the uh, mechanical wheels just take care of that for you or what kind of uh, implementations do you have to do for that? Yeah, we struggled a lot with that, but eventually these mechanical wheels really helped us get into the center. Uh, it directs them up into this roller for some extra traction. Sure. Um, but mainly, if we're jammed up trying to get rid of balls, we added this tumor, we call it. <laughs> All um, right. It's, it's, one of, it's a cut-up wheel we added just to give one side priority if yeah. we were to have two balls stuck in our, inside our infeed. It works fairly well. Um, 
we haven't really seen a jam this year. Yeah, I mean, when we saw it come in, it looks like a very smooth process and that, but I love hearing just that iteration process to get to where that moment yeah. is uh, to go there as well. Uh, let's hand it over to Bianca who's going to talk a little bit more about your uh, shooter uh, and then going into your climber as well, too. And Bianca, uh, you know, your shooter here just really well packaged, it looks like, all the way through. A lot of uh, kind of these, like, uh, pre-shooter wheels going up and in uh, to what looks like to try to speed it up a bit more. So love to just hear uh, everything that's gone into this process. And once again, any changes you might have made to it as well? Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of it being packaged mainly in the middle was uh, the idea of modularity and making sure that we had a lot of room for what were our unknowns this season, which were mainly our climber subsystem. Sure. And um, since we have swerved, uh, swerved drivetrain, we thought that it would be a bigger priority to ensure that um, we knew that we had enough power going into the shot so that there was not too much front or back spin. So in, in doing so, we added a lot of power in all directions. So here's our front spin, here's our kicker wheels, and here's our back spin, all powered by three different Falcons. And um, sorry. also, uh, since we have a swerve drivetrain, we also decided not to have a turret. So instead, we had, we had enough time to focus on a linear angle adjuster here in the back so we could adjust um, our shots from any place on the field. What's kind of the sweet spot for Beak Squad to shoot from a field? Like, where, where's your favorite spot to shoot from? Kind of anywhere. Anywhere? Hey, I like that. So, so do, you, do you find yourself shooting like all the way back to the launch pad sort of thing typically? Yeah. Very cool on there. Um, let's talk about uh, some of the vision that goes on that as well too. Uh, and uh, do, do you see this uh, camera up here as well? So how does that integrate uh, with the vision and uh, what are you doing in general for it? So. We have a limelight on our robot, and this limelight helps us, firstly, to align to the target and get us to a point where we, if we shoot, it'll be either on the side or right in the middle of the goal. And this also, we also use the limelight to calculate the distance that we are from the goal. And we use that, and we feed it into our shooter subsystem, which then calculates the needed speeds for the wheels, and we'll shoot, and it shoots the ball to the right distance, and it's, it's worked very well. But in the past, we we didn't really we weren't really able to use the limelight in our first few competitions. So we we added this camera that has a piece of tape right down the middle. Yeah. And that acts as a sort of crosshair. So it, when we whenever we shoot on the dashboard, it would switch to that camera, and there would be a line right down the middle, and you have to align that to the goal. Makes sense. Uh, let's start to wrap up here about talking about your climbers. Hand it to Bianca first, talk about the mechanical side of it, uh, and then we'll go through the climber automation sequence for it too. Yeah, so um, we decided to go with the thrifty bot climbers, and we changed specifically these boxes since we had noticed that there was some troubles with that in terms of um, telescoping in and out throughout the season. And also, um, Later in the season, we had decided to use pneumatic actuation, uh, one specifically for the infeed and also mainly for the climbers. Yeah. So they go out and inward so that we can make sure that we have balance going between the bars, um, planning, kind of preparing where we are going up to the ascending bar and also making sure that we are able to um, fight against like the, um, the tippiness of the robot as it's going up between bars. Sure. Um, also, we had a um, new CNC router that we had gotten for the 2022 season, and it allowed us to have more iterations specifically on the hooks and what we thought were going to be the right choices so that we had enough balance and we were able to trust our climber in not falling the season, which luckily it hasn't. Yeah. Well, you all have the uh, automation sequence you go through for it, so let's talk a little bit more uh, about that process. And if you can kind of narrate each step of the way uh, as it's going, that'd be great. All right. All right. So first, we before each match, we need to ensure that we zero our climber because we use the, the encoder values return from the, the climber motors to determine where the climber is and use that for automation sequences. So for, for most of the season, we've been doing it we've been doing it manually. We have these pins that we can put through this hole and it'll keep the climber in position. And but now we use current sensing to run the climber down and then pull it up a little bit. That's what it's doing right now. And that gets, gets us to the, about the right position and we put the pins in to keep the climber steady even when it's off. So the first step of the climber, climbing automation sequence, it pulls it up so that it can reach the mid bar. And then after that, we, we align and we drive forward so that this hits the mid bar. And then after that, 
We pull down. So when we, when we first pull down, we pull down until this clips down. And then after that, we, we let it release. And then we pull back down so that it's now resting on these. And then in the next step, we go ahead and we first actuate this, the, the climbers, and then we pull up, and then we actuate again so that we're hooked, hooked onto the high bar. And then from there, the next step is to pull down. So similar to pulling down to the mid bar, we first we first pull it down so that the this little latch it kind of tomahawks into the bar to prevent tipping, and then from there we pull these arms up until this this is below the bar, and from there we again pull the robot up so that this clips and releases, and then finally we go back down until it's resting again. And we repeat this exact same sequence for the traversal bar. Well, 4028 Beak Squad, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your robot. Uh, this team, definitely keep an eye on this team in future years. I think uh, you got a great trajectory and a great direction for this team. Especially congratulations on your uh, championship division finalists this year. Wish you best of luck here at IRI. But, of course, can't wait to see more from you in future years, too. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, too. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.